Sergeant Heath, I still say we can send for Philo Vance on this murder case. Hey, why? We have the whole homicide department work, haven't we? And if that isn't enough, I ought to have a man here by tomorrow at the latest. I know all that. I still say this is a case for the maestro. The maestro. Philo Vance, the murder maestro. Oh, sure, he's helped on cases, but, but we don't need him on this What's so tough about it? A millionaire named Simon Joyce is walking along a road. A mistletoe road. All right, mistletoe road. A hit-and-run driver clips him. So maybe it's murder. And because the thing happened so close to the state line and chances are the car crossed it, we get the FBI. Well, what else do you think we need? I'm not discounting either your department or the FBI, Heath, but I still would feel better if Vance were on this case. Look, Mr. Markham, I'll be reasonable. Maybe this was a planned murder. So, if it was, we got three suspects. The dead man's niece and nephew who lived with him and his bachelor brother. Wait till we're through with them before you yell for Vance. According to the dead man's will, neither the niece nor nephew inherited a dime, so they had no motive. No monetary motive, that is. And as I understand it, the three were very friendly. Sure, that's right. I questioned the servants and found that out. But the brother, Mr. Markham, the dead man's brother, he gets the business all for himself. He and the dead guy were partners, and it was an awful good business. He's the one I'm going to work on. Oh, take it easy with him, Heath. I've questioned him myself, and he's a sick man. Yeah, he'll be a whole lot sicker after I get through with him, if he killed his brother, believe me. One other thing, Heath. Yeah? Apparently you didn't object to the FBI being called in. Why object to Vance? Nope. First of all, I don't even get a chance to call the FBI. James Evans, the dead man's nephew, brought them in. But I welcome the FBI, D.A. I'd take them any time rather than work on a case with Philo Vance. Now, Heath, Vance never takes any bows for the cases he helps us on. You always get the newspaper credit for the cases he solves. That's just it, D.A. Think what that does to my morale. <laughs> How much further, Markham? Not too far. It's around a bend in the road up ahead. That's the spot where Mr. Joyce's body was found, eh? That's right. Knocked in a ditch on the left side of the road. The reason I'm certain it was premeditated, Vance, is that from what I understand, Mr. Joyce always walked at the very edge of the road. If he were that careful, he'd walk on the left side of a road, facing any cars that might be approaching. Our examination showed that the car that hit him was coming toward him, Vance. That's what bears out our theory. Sorry we're getting out here so late in the evening, but I couldn't reach you before. I was busy cleaning up another case. By the way, you realize, of course, Markham, that we're being followed. Oh, yes. Well, my turn to be surprised at you, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> I got a little tired of having you do that to me on every case we work on, Vance. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> Not a bit. I promise to do it to you again on this one, too. <laughs> providing you'll tell me who's in the car in back of us. It's Dan Stevens of the FBI, Vance. He was on his way out here, and Heath told him we were coming out, so he said he'd follow us. Any objections? Of course not. He said he'd wait in his car until we were through examining the scene of the crime. He said he didn't want to get in the way. What he meant was that he wanted to make his own observations. But that's perfectly all right with me. Here we are, Vance. Here's the curve, and there's the spot. Hmm. Mr. Evans was found across the road, eh? That's right. A little way down from that big tree. Very interesting. If your theory is correct, and a car came down this road the way we came, intent on hitting Mr. Joyce, he'd have to come very close to that tree as he made the turn. I wonder. You wonder what? Come with me and see. Better get out my side. All right. I'm right with you, Vance. Well, I see our FBI friend has stopped, Markham. He's keeping his word not to interfere till we were finished. Well, here's the tree, Vance. Uh, tell me what there was about it that made you think. Made me hope, my friend. Hope that perhaps the murder car grazed it. And took some paint off, you mean? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't do us much good. As soon as the driver noticed it, he'd have the scratch repainted. Oh, of course he would, but... Oh, you found something on the tree, Vance? I most certainly have. A bit of paint. Dark green paint. 
Markham, we may have something here. Signal to Mr. Stevens of the FBI to come over here, will you? Certainly. Oh, Stevens. Stevens. Yes? Would you come over here, please? Well, of course. He's coming, Vance. Why do you want him? Markham, do you know the FBI can take that little bit of paint on the tree trunk and tell you what make of car it came from and what year and what model? Yes, I've heard that. It's true. J. Edgar Hoover, head of the FBI, mentioned it in a speech the other day. They can do the same tracing with a fragment of glass from the headlight and sometimes from a windshield. Oh, hi there, Markham. You yelled for me? Yes, I did, Stevens. I'd like you to know Philo Vance. The private investigator? My pleasure, Mr. Vance. Thank you. It's a privilege to meet a member of your great organization. Now we can consult the corpus juris secundum together. Uh, Latin <laughs> wasn't my star subject in college, Vance. What does that mean? Nothing important, believe me. What is important is this. Mr. Stevens, I want you to look at that bit of paint on the tree. Where? Oh, yes. Yes, I see it. I understand the FBI laboratories can tell what make of car that paint came from, the model of the car and the year. That's right. I'll just take my penknife and remove that paint and a bit of the wood it's on. That won't hurt the tree any. By what process does your FBI determine all the details from just a bit of paint, Stevens? Well, it's pretty long and involved, and it isn't necessary for us agents to be familiar with the details, Markham. <laughs> Being cagey, Mr. Stevens? No, no, not at all, Vance. I honestly don't know. I know enough to believe we've got a very valuable clue here, though. I think we have. Will you rush it back to town for analysis? I most certainly will. I'll phone Mr. Markham a report as soon as I get one. Oh, uh, where will you be the first thing in the morning, Markham? They've fixed a spare room for me at the Joyce Main House. I'll call you there. Where will you be, Vance? With Markham. I haven't met our suspects yet, and after a good night's sleep, I'll start on that niece and nephew first thing in the morning. Well, Vance, this is the room they've given us, according to the butler. Shall we go in? Might as well, Markham. Just one moment, though. I want to fix the floor plan in my mind. All right. Now, James Evans, the dead man's nephew, has the room next to ours, right? Yes, and according to the well-informed butler, he's retired. Sally Evans, his sister, has the room down the hall, but she hasn't come home as... That came from that room. It must be the nephew, James Evans. Come on, Vance. Right. Mr. Evans, what's wrong? What's wrong in there? Wait just a minute. Oh, Mr. Markham. Thank goodness it's you. This is Philo Vance. What happened to you, Evans? Nightmare? <coughs> Nightmare. It sure wasn't any nightmare. Somebody climbed in the window and tried to smother me with my pillow. Whoever it was went out the window when I yelled for help. Vance, what are you looking for over there? Just looking out the window of Mr. Evans' room, Markham. Somebody did climb up here and apparently down again within the past few minutes. This leaf I picked up from the floor was only recently torn from the vine. Mr. Evans, I'll have the police double the guard around this house. You can go back to sleep. Oh, thank heavens. I guarantee you'll be safe from the man who just tried to smother you. Man, Markham. <laughs> the attempt to smother Mr. Evans here wasn't made by a man. Is that you who just came in, Sergeant Heath? Yeah, Vance, it's me. <laughs> Enjoying your breakfast? Yes, very much. Care to join me? Ah, uh, I had breakfast hours ago. Where's Mr. Markham? I left him upstairs sleeping. So you caught the girl who tried to smother Mr. James Evans last night, eh? Well, how do you know that? Oh. You're a good police officer, Heath. And the men who are guarding this house know their business. When I told Mr. Markham last night that the person who tried to smother Mr. Evans was a girl, I knew you'd pick her up. Well, we did. But how did you know it was a girl? Even if you caught a look at a figure running from the house, it was too dark to see whether it was a man or a woman. That's true, but the figure climbed through the fence surrounding this house, Heath. A man would have climbed over it in as much as it wasn't very high. That much I could see. Uh. You ask me, there isn't anything you can't see. <laughs> Anyhow, I got her outside. She's the murdered guy's niece. You want her in here? Yes, I'd like to talk to her while I'm waiting for Mr. Stevens of the FBI to phone in his report. Please, Heath. Okay. Hey, Murdoch, bring that Evans girl in here, huh? All right. You getting anywhere on this case, Vance? In distance, nowhere. In intensity, I'm doing very well, I think. Well, what is it you want with me? Miss Evans, I believe I'm Philo Vance. I'm delighted. Well, the words are right, but the tone is wrong. Uh, Heath, do you mind? <laughs> no, Vance, I'll leave you to yell if you want something. Right, thank you. Miss Evans, why did you try to smother your brother last night? I... Uh, excuse me, please, I'd better take that. Philo Vance speaking. Vance, Stevens of the FBI. I got a laboratory check of that paint from the tree. Comes from a 1942 Plymouth. Probably a convertible. Well, that's excellent, Mr. Stevens. Thank you very much. Uh, do me one more favor, will you? Well, sure, Vance. What? 
The dead man had a brother, the only individual in this case who benefits from the will. Meet me at his office in an hour, will you? It's in the Wilcox building. I'll be there. See you later, Vance. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, Miss Evans, as I remember it, I had asked you why you tried to smother your brother last night. I did it because I loved my Uncle Simon. Am I to see the connection between my question and your answer? Of course. My brother killed Uncle Simon, so I wanted to kill him. So your brother killed your uncle, eh? Yes. Can you prove that? No, I just know it, that's all. Well, that, I'm afraid, isn't enough. Miss Evans, what kind of car do you own? I have a convertible. Plymouth, 1942? Uh, yes. How did you know? That was the car that ran down and killed your uncle, Miss Evans. Ha right <laughs> now, I have a clue I want to run down. And then I'll be back to you. <laughs> Vance! Hello there, Mr. Stevens. I've been waiting for you. I got here as soon as I could. So, old man Joyce's office is in this building, huh? On the ground floor. While I was waiting for you, I was looking around. Take a look at this car parked at the curb. Hmm. 1942 Plymouth. Convertible. With the initials B.J. on it. That could mean Bernard Joyce, the dead man's brother. Well, let's go in and find out. Right. Mr. Stevens, in the event that Bernard Joyce, who was the partner of the dead man, was stealing from Simon Joyce, could you tell from looking at the books? No, but we have expert accountants over at the FBI. That's what I imagined. Uh, after you, sir. Thank you. Uh, why do you ask about the books? Because everything points to the brother as Simon Joyce's killer. Oh. The entire business now goes to him. The car parked outside, which we now know was the same make and model as the murder car, is his... And it would be a plus motive if Bernard Joyce had been stealing from the firm. Well, we'll find out. Hmm. Joyce and Joyce. Architectural consultants. This is the office, Vance. Let's go in, Mr. Stevens. Well, what do you two want? What do you want? Excuse us, please, Mr. Joyce. My name is Vance. I'm a private investigator. This is Mr. Stevens of the FBI. Don't care who you are, who he is either. I'm a sick man. Hand me that water pitcher. Time to take one of my pills. I'll pour it for you. That's enough. That's enough. What are you trying to do? Give me enough water to drown me? I'm sick enough as it is. Uh, Mr. Joyce, uh, where were you when your brother was murdered? He wasn't murdered. He was out walking. He was hit by a car. It was an accident. Very well. The accident occurred early on Tuesday morning, about 8.30 a.m., where were you at the time? 8.30 Tuesday? I don't know. I was driving around somewhere, I imagine. No place definite. Wanted to pick up my nephew, James. A fine boy, James. Only he wasn't home. And his sister's a devil. He's a fine boy. Now, be quiet now, both of you. This is a business I'm trying to run. Hello? Hello, this is District Attorney Markham. Is Philo Vance there? Who? Vance? That's my name, sir. Yep, he's here. Wait a minute. For you. Is there an extension I can use, Mr. Joyce, where I won't be overheard? What's the matter? Afraid I'll hear you? Yes. <laughs> Now, go in that office there and close the door. Thank you. Stevens. Don't worry, Vince. I'll see that Mr. Joyce hangs up the minute you pick up that phone. Thank you. I won't be long, gentlemen. Take your time, Vince, old man. Right. Markham. Hello, Vance. What was that sound? Somebody listening in? That was Mr. Joyce hanging up the phone in the next room. Uh, what's bothering you, Markham? Vance, I'm completely restless about this case. Nothing's happening. I was wondering if you'd found out anything. I think so, Markham. For instance, I know who killed Simon Joyce. And I know why he was killed. But unfortunately, I can't prove a case against our murderer yet. District Attorney Markham. The mistletoe murder case began with the finding of the body of rich Simon Joyce, victim of a hit-and-run driver on Mistletoe Road. Philo Vance is working on the case, as is an FBI representative named Stevens, called in by James Evans, a nephew whose sister, Sally Evans, later tried to smother him. The dead man's fortune went to his brother and business partner, Bernard Joyce, from whose office Philo Vance just told me he knew who had killed Simon Joyce, but couldn't prove it. Our men watching the Joyce home report that Sally Evans and her brother are in the living room. It is a little... 
So you tried to kill me, did you? Tried to smother me while I slept. I tried once and I'll try again. Only this time I'll do it. Look, you little hellion, I'll teach you not Come to... Come one step nearer to me and I'll, I'll let you have it with this lamp. You don't scare me. The place is full of policemen. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? Just try it and see. Why shouldn't I do it? You're a murderer. You killed Uncle Simon. Stop acting. You did it and you know it. Don't try to make it look like me or I don't swear do it, I'll... Don't James. Don't touch me. I'll make you sorry you ever... Oh! What's going on in here? What does it look like, Sergeant Heath? Looks like I hit my brother with this lamp, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I did. Vance, is that you in that car? Yes, it's I, Markham. Just drove here from the city. Been interviewing Mr. Bernard Joyce. Vance, what did you mean by telling me you knew who killed Simon Joyce but couldn't prove it? Tell me who it is and we'll find a way of making the guilty one confess. Sorry, my friend, not yet. Is that the garage where the family kept its cars? Yes. Is that where we're heading? That's right. How many cars in the garage, Martin? Two. Both Plymouth convertibles. Belong to the nephew, James Evans, and the niece, Sally. What year, Plymouth, Martin? I'm not sure. 41, 42, I'd say, is a guess. Why? I'll tell you when I see them, which should be now. Well, there we are. Now, this car on the left, initials S.E. That must be Sally's. Yes, that goes without saying. And the other one is James' car. May I repeat what you just said? That goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> this model of Miss Evans is a 1942. Well, that's interesting. Help me look for a scratch on the fender somewhere, will you? Of course. While we're looking, I'll tell you that Simon Joyce's brother has a 42 Plymouth convertible. I saw it. It had a scratch on the fender, newly painted. Oh, I see what you meant when you told me you knew our murderer. No, no, I don't think you do. Now, look here, Markham. Look, a newly painted spot on the girl's car. Of course it is. Well, Vance, that complicates things somewhat. Think so? Let's inspect her brother's car. I guarantee that has a newly painted spot on it, too. What? Our murderer is very cute, Mark. There was undoubtedly a scratch on the murder car, so he scratched and painted over the cars belonging to our other two suspects. Vance, here's the scratch on James Evans' car. Newly painted over, too. Hmm. There's a phone over there. Want to call the FBI and report this to Stevens? He has a right to know. I believe he's questioning Miss Evans in the house now. I would like to call Mr. Joyce, though. It's a coin telephone, and I don't have any change. Let me have a nickel, will you? Certainly. I'm sorry, Vance. All I have is two half dollars. Well, it doesn't matter. We'll call from the house. We can use the room we had last night. Vance, wait a minute. Why? I can be of a little help on this case anyhow. The FBI report said that the paint from the tree came from a 1942 Plymouth convertible, right? Yes, of course. Well, look here at James Evans' car. It isn't a 42 at all. It's a 40. He could have been driving Miss Evans' car, Mark. That's right, I suppose. No, I'm sorry, my friend. I didn't mean to confuse you, but it's wrong. Miss Evans' car can't be driven. I inspected the motor last night. The carburetor's been removed, and the dust around it indicates it's been out for some time. But Miss Evans could have been driving her brother... No. No, I'm sorry. She couldn't have. That's a 1940. I found that out myself. Confused, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Confused is a charitable word. Well, you won't be in that state much longer. No longer than this evening, believe me. By that time, I'll have this entire case ready to lay right in your lap. Any more questions, Mr. Stevens? Because if you have any, you'll get the same answers. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All right, Miss Evans, I'm through with you, I imagine. Where's your brother? He left here for town about an hour ago. He'll be back for dinner. I hope you don't intend to leave the house. He can go and I can. I wasn't able to see him to tell him that he couldn't leave. Now, I'm going upstairs to chat with Vance and Markham. I hope you'll... Oh, uh, sit still, please. I'll take it. Hello? Stevens speaking. Stevens, this is James Evans. Yes? I'm calling in to report. I intend to remain here in town, and I won't be back at the house till morning. I'm sorry, Mr. Evans, but I'll have to ask you to come back. Come back? Yes, I have something very important to discuss with you. Very important. Oh, really? Well, when do you want me to come back, then? At once. Okay, I'll drive back, but it'll take an hour. Goodbye. Bye. Your brother's on his way back. For my part, he can stay away forever. 
Look, Mr. Stevens, I know he killed Uncle Simon. I can't prove it, but I know it. I assure you, Miss Evans, I'll investigate him thoroughly. And I'm sure Mr. Markham, Philo Vance, and Sergeant Heath will do the same. You, uh, you might be interested in knowing that we do have a very definite clue. It seems that the car that killed your uncle... <laughs> What happened here? What happened, Miss... How did this happen, Miss Evans? Stevens. I don't know. I was talking to him, and a, and a shot came from the window, and he fell right here, right in front of me. How is he, Markham? He's dead. Bullet got him in the heart. Oh. My brother was in town. He, he just called up, and Mr. Stevens told him to come back. And then Mr. Stevens came over here to talk to me, and, and then there was a shot. Oh, no, 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 no. Take it easy, Miss Evans. You won't be under this strain much longer. Philo Vance has promised to name your uncle's murderer. There's no question that whoever killed him killed Stevens. We'll have him in custody by this evening. Right, Vance? That's correct. But first, I want to pay another visit to the garage and then to the police laboratory. Come with me, please, Markham. Mr. Vance, Mr. Markham, you'll soon see how we bring out fingerprints that are not entirely visible under a microscope. Now, this telephone dial you brought me... The one I took from the telephone in Simon Joyce's garage, Doctor. Yes, yes, of course. Now, over it, I break this small vial. Here. The vial contains iodine crystals. The fumes from the crystals are invaluable in bringing out latent fingerprints. In a moment, we may even be able to see them with the naked eye. Vance, if we were looking for fingerprints, why didn't we take the telephone receiver from the garage? If your theory is right, we could have gotten excellent prints from that. Our murderer is clever, Markham. If, as I imagine, he used the phone in the garage, he would have worn gloves to hold the receiver. But he'd never have seen the necessity for wearing them when he dialed a number. Besides, gloves are unwieldy when you're dialing. Prints are coming up, gentlemen. Just the tip of the finger, but prints just the same. You have the fingerprints of the girl, her brother, and the dead man's uncle to compare those with. Yes, these I have. Sergeant Heath got them early in this case. Now, I compare under the microscope. I'll tell you whose prints they are. Man, if you could tell us, why did we go to all this trouble? It's the proof we need, Mark. But, Vance, if you had told us the murderer before, the FBI man Stevens would be alive today. The FBI was never on this case, Markham. Stevens was not an FBI man. He was an imposter. That's the reason I knew that the murderer was the man you told me had called the FBI. Markham, arrest James Evans for murder. <laughs> James, my favorite nephew. I find it hard to believe. Please, Mr. Vance, the water pitcher. Certainly, Mr. Joyce. Mr. Joyce, it was because James was your favorite that he killed your brother. He knew the entire state would go to you, that you were sick, and that you would eventually pass on and leave everything to him. A poor, misguided boy. He thought he was very clever, didn't he, Vance? In a way, he was, Markham. That business of calling in the FBI was very cute. We've never had that happen before. Vance, how did you know that Stevens wasn't an FBI man? And that, as a consequence, James Evans never called the Federal Bureau. That was my lead to him almost from the beginning, Markham. In the first place, according to the FBI manual, a federal investigator must either be a lawyer, a linguist, a scientist, or an accountant. Early in the case, I mentioned a very well-known law book, Corpus Juris Secundum. It's in every lawyer's office. And Stevens had never heard of it. That's what he said. And he didn't know that the Latin words meant second body of the law. Therefore, he wasn't a linguist. When we were on the way to visit Mr. Bernard Joyce here, Stevens told me that if there was a discrepancy in the books, he couldn't find it. He'd have to take it to the FBI offices. Proving he wasn't an accountant. Exactly. Yes. And when he couldn't explain the process by which the paint from the murder car was checked and analyzed, I knew he wasn't a scientist. Well, if he wasn't a lawyer, an accountant, a linguist, or a scientist, he couldn't have been an FBI man. Simple. That's true, of course. But, Vance, what made you think to take the dial from the garage telephone? If my logic was correct up to there, it was James who killed Stevens. He had called Stevens on the phone a moment before, saying he was in town. Yet a moment later, Stevens was shot. This even I understand now. If my nephew was in town, he couldn't have been near enough to kill Stevens a moment later. No, but if he called from the garage, he could have. And I believed he did call from the garage. And laboratory tests prove he did. 
Vance, I know now what started you on your original line of reasoning. If, as you suspected, Stevens wasn't an FBI man, then Evans never called the Federal Bureau, but devised this scheme of supplying us with the false clue of the 1942 Plymouth car. His own car was a 1940, removing him from suspicion. And the scratch on the fender, he cunningly duplicated on his sister's car and on your car, Mr. Joyce. He wanted it to look like I killed my brother. He didn't care who was blamed as long as he got away with it. The reason he killed Stevens was because he knew Stevens could blackmail him forever after the masquerade was over. Well, Vance, it seems that the masquerade is over now. And so, incidentally, is the mistletoe murder case. (laughs) 